A new program is giving Minnesota inmates a second chance if they're willing to put in the work. Tonight, WCCL's Liz Collins shares the story of one woman hoping to move on from a dark past to earn her law degree. This is my profession. It keeps calling my name. You know, decade after decade, it's calling my name. It is with the same stack of books and following the same rigorous schedule anyone else studying for the law school admission test would stick to. Only Marie Nanyalobi is practicing for the LSAT, serving a life without parole sentence in prison. A lot of times I, you know, replay that night and replay that night, but there's nothing I can do. And all I can do is move forward. After graduating with her bachelor's degree from a college near Chicago and taking a break before she'd hoped to go to law school, Anya Lobi says she got involved with the wrong man from Minnesota who was addicted to drugs. And I know a lot of times from the outside looking in can say, oh, why didn't you just leave him? Why didn't you just go? But when you're, you know, in an abusive relationship and when you go through certain things, you can't just leave. You can't just walk away. Your, your feet can, but your mind can't. Eight months later, she was charged with aiding and abetting first degree premeditated murder after 23-year-old Anthony Fairbanks was shot and killed in Minneapolis. To say that I don't deserve a chance is to say you don't deserve a chance because everybody deserves a second chance. Seven years into her life sentence at Shakopee Women's Correctional Facility, that second chance came from the Prison to Law Pipeline, a nonprofit offering paralegal and law degrees remotely to incarcerated Minnesotans. This past spring, Anya Lobi became the first woman to take the LSAT behind bars. We're super proud of Maureen. Uh, she leads by example. As Shakopee's education director, Dr. Kristen O'Connell explains that of the 400 women serving a sentence, most will be released in five to six years. Everyone that gets released out these doors are going to be our neighbors and our friends, and so the more they're educated, the better they can help their communities. In Maureen's case, she's still actively working for a test score high enough to be able to apply to Mitchell Hamlin in St. Paul. Volunteers have helped her study to make it this far. It's really inspirational to meet people that actually care. It makes me um, dream about the day where I can be that person to reach out, to help out, to give somebody else a second chance. She already does with other inmates, offering advice to help them navigate a complicated system. And while she hopes to be paroled, Anya Lobi believes her real freedom comes in the form of knowledge, which is why she won't be closing her books anytime soon. If you really want something, you go after it. It doesn't matter how long it takes. In Shakopee, Liz Collin, WCCO 4 News. Shakopee also offers courses in cosmetology, heavy equipment operation, and the IT fields. Under state law, all inmates must get their GED if they don't already have a high school diploma. If you'd like to learn more about the prison to law pipeline, all paid for by donations, you'll find a link at WCCO.com.